Pretty. That's what you want to do. Trigger breath control. Going outside of this, if you if they're spread, you're moving your sight picture around too much. So just drive. Taurus PT1911 wearing a Kimber 22 slide conversion on top. Yes, we dura coated it. Tactical doodle, my son and myself. We've been testing this a lot, both in indoor shooting like we're doing here, also out in the desert. We're pretty happy with it. Like all 22 conversions, you'll have an occasional jam, but if you run high impulse energy, 22 rounds like CCI Mini Mag, it will be okay. Here we had it. You just saw me firing this semi-rapid fire with garbage Walmart Federal ammo. I had a few stoppages with that garbage ammo. Again, part of the testing phase. But with CCI Mini Mags, we're gonna light this guy up in the head right now. with a Kimber 22 slide conversion. Outstanding training tool, worth the money. Hello TMPers, people from the internet that will find this review welcome, nothing fancy, knocking out the review on the excellent 22 conversion kit by Kimber for your 1911. And we have been putting a lot of rounds downrange with this little gun as you've just seen. I feel ready and have enough information to knock out a tabletop review. That's always my preferred style of doing it. I've tried doing it in the field. It just doesn't work. It's too windy. Can't hear me. Multiple takes. So we do it this way. And we roll in video as necessary of shooting this little gun. I'm going to start the review off with this. I always laugh when I go out with guys shooting. And uh, occasionally I'll run into one or two that will be elitist in caliber. In other words, they don't like shooting 22s. They say, oh, I only like, I only like shooting center fire then they act like they're above shooting 22s. I, I think it's a joke. Uh, trigger time is trigger time, dudes. It doesn't matter what you do it on. Even an air gun is trigger time. Airsoft is trigger time. Yeah, you don't laugh. It's still trigger time. You're practicing the basics. Trigger, breath control, squeeze, grip, all that stuff. Sight picture. Um, and let's start it off by saying this as well. Here we have some casing shot in the Nothing Fancy Project, of course, awaiting reload. Um, that takes time though, uh, and my time is very limited. I don't know about yours, probably the same thing. 
time is money usually. That's the way it is in my schedule. But looking at this, I didn't count them out. That's about 100 rounds, 45 ACP. Uh, believe it or not, and I'm going to put it in terms that everybody can understand, this equates to this. That's about 50 bucks. About 50 cents a round, give or take, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending where you go. And that's assuming you can find the rounds to buy. Because center fire pistol is hard to find. 380, 9mm, 45 ACP. Uh, forget about it. Uh, and guys that are big reloaders, uh, you know, I'm a reloader too, but with a project, my jobs, family, and all the things going on, you know, I don't have, you know, four hours to go in the basement and work up loads. At least if I do, the project will suffer, trust me. So I'm kind of stuck with that. 50 bucks, 100 rounds. Now, the alternative, if you go with a conversion kit like the excellent Kimber, and we'll talk about specifics here in a second, is more like this. Here we have very high quality ammo. I always mark it when I bought it so I can keep track of the pricing uh, for the project for you guys. That's what I paid. Seven bucks. So about 15% of the cost. So take your pick. Uh, you know, 85% cheaper. 90% of the training and fun, I will say. That's what I've always said with the subcalibers like the Rimfire. Or man up and break out the greenbacks, namely, namely 50 of them. So when I run into the elitism that I see on the range, oh, I only like shooting centerfire. I'm like, dude, you're a joke. Seriously. Uh, how much money do you have? And we're just talking one gun. Never mind 223, AKs, maybe precision rifle. All of those take a lot of money to fire too. And I'm into all of that. You know that. It's not just one gun. If you're all about just one gun, maybe that's a 45, then okay, I can see that. Maybe you're an IPSC, ISPA competitor, that's all you do is reload, doable. But for most of us who have 1911s, who want to shoot our 1911s and benefit from all the things that that frame gives us, trigger, safety, you know, grip safety, maybe a special hammer, which you've seen in my 1911 gunsmithing vid there at Impact, which modified this frame, which is by Taurus. I'll mention that in a sec. Uh, then you need to uh, get a conversion kit. That's what I'm saying. As I was thinking about this review, by the way, I'm thinking, well, how's the best way to discuss a slide conversion for a gun? And I start thinking about it, I'm like, well, actually, I'm reviewing a pistol. It's a whole different pistol, isn't it? Granted, it's a 1911 frame. It's a frame I already have. But we're going to go down to talking points of a pistol. That way, I can hit everything. Because I'm thinking to myself, well, i got to talk about that. i got to talk about that. It's a pistol. It's a different pistol, basically. POU, and let's just jump right in. And I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can for you guys that are time crunched. But there's lots to discuss, as usual. POU, I'm going to say primarily as a training tool. When you put a 20 type, 22 conversion slide on your 1911, by the way, safety check as always, then you're saying, I want to practice with my 1911 more. And you're smart uh, because you don't have a lot of money to do it. And 100 rounds, honestly, it really isn't that much. You need to do hundreds and hundreds to get really good with your frame and stuff. That's what I say. And you need to do it throughout the year if you're really serious about it. So training tool. Secondarily, it can be recreational. Fun, fun, fun. I enjoy shooting this gun. Doodle, my son, Tactical Doodle, loves shooting this gun. Inadvertent Smell and all the other cast members you've seen in the Nut and Fancy Project, we love the Kimber conversion. It's fun to shoot. Just love it. And I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about how the frame helps, the lightweight aluminum frame. Hopefully I'll remember. Now, some guys will say, well, what do I buy? Do I buy a conversion kit for my 1911? And I'll do tabletops on other options with like the SIG P226LR. That'll be a separate tabletop. Don't want to get sidetracked with that. But some will say, do I get that or do I get a dedicated 22 pistol since they're about the same cost? And I'm going to jump in the talking points. They are about $300 for this. It's not inexpensive. Guess what? About $300 for that. Actually, probably less, depending where you go. This is a Ruger 2245. An outstanding option. Yeah, I know I still have to do a tabletop on it. We'll do it. Outstanding option for training, recreation, small game hunting, dispatching rats, whatever. I love the little Ruger pistol. It's supposed to mark, mark three and the 2245. Which to get? You know, it depends. I don't fault you either way. Uh, the advantage of a 2245, last shot hold open. Your Kimber 22 conversion kit will not have that, as do several other conversion kits as of 2009 are not doing that. I think they will integrate it as time goes on. Watch for that. But that has a last shot hold open, which I think is very beneficial, both for training, because it's a, hey, dummy, you're out of ammo clue, and then you know how to reload, practicing your emergency reloads. Good to have. Um, the Advantage Arms, 
conversions for the Glocks. I understand do have that. I have secured one from a friend. I don't have it in my possession yet, but we'll review that. But right now we're talking about this. Uh, either one's good. If you have an aluminum frame, 1911, and I kinda, I'm kind of jumping on the talking points here, forgive me, um, you're going to have a really lightweight gun with this Kimber. Very lightweight, about 26 ounces, and it is a joy to shoot, a joy to, to handle and take along. It's so lightweight. Remember, this is the Taurus PT-1911 aluminum frame, previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project. I've shown you, shown you it many times. I like aluminum frames. There might be some guys say, well, with a 45 caliber, they may not be as durable. I haven't seen that yet. Um, and for the amount of rounds that I realistically will put down range, it's probably going to be just fine. If I'm a competitor, like I've said before, I'm running a race gun, IPSC, ISPA, whatever, um, three gun competition, I know for a fact I want to be doing a lot of this, then I'll probably go with a steel gun, just take the additional weight and gain some durability. But for most of us, aluminum frame will be fine. Uh, but if you have a steel frame 1911, it'll weigh about 34 ounces, and that will put it on par with this gun. This is about 34 ounces right here, 33. It's not a lightweight gun, as are most 22s, including Smith & Wesson 22A. See, there's a, there they are, and those are some other options for you. They're around 30 ounces, 34 ounces right there. See, um, just depends. I like the lightweight of the Kimber. Uh, if that's a consideration, I mean, roll it into your decision process. Either one is good. If I had to side, and let's say someone already has a 1911 frame, and nothing fancy, I want it for recreation, I want it for target practice, staying trained, I would say spend your money on a conversion kit before this. And that's just by the slightest of margins. Okay, I still think a dedicated 22 pistol should be in everybody's inventory. They're so fun and really over the long haul, so inexpensive. You really should have at least one. I don't care what it is. Ruger 2245 Mark III, Buck Marks are outstanding. The Smith, Smith & Wessons I just showed you, they're all good. So a POU can be a recreational firearm and it will function well. Some guys will say, well, could I use it as a WRL gun and take my slide along with me along with 22 ammo? and maybe have some 45 ACP as a backup. Yeah, you can do that, but I think you're you're kind of kidding yourself about how much weight you're talking. Anytime you opt for 45 ACP as your go to war gun, you are talking a lot of weight. Loaded 45 ACP, especially when you use brass casings as opposed to blazer, very heavy. Don't kid yourself. You need to load up in your go to war vest or whatever your uh, tactical uh, loadout system is and go hike around a bit in hot weather a long way, it's like five miles, and then get back to me and tell me how that worked out for you. Uh, it sucks. That's why it's not my go-to-war gun. So I would think, um, you know, you could use that, you know, 22 slide, 45 slide, you know, I'm carrying both slides with me. The slide itself is a chunk of metal, and I'm considering that you're carrying everything on your back or in your bug out kit. So I wouldn't say that that's really a viable option. Instead, I would just probably outfit it with a slide and just use it as a 22. Seriously, because the ammo's lighter, the gun's lighter. 22 still gets the job done within range, uh, within its uh, effective range. Okay, so POU, there you have it. Take your pick, uh, you know, training gun, recreational. There's some considerations. Size, weight, I already talked about. It's just like a 1911, five inch barrel. And we said the weight, 26 ounces with an aluminum frame 1911, round 34 with steel frame. And that makes it very uh, ideal, I think, for training as well. Uh, this is milled aluminum. Actually, not milled, but cast aluminum here. Now, this is a good point to say this. This is actually Duracoated by Tactical Doodle, my son and myself. You know how we like DC and stuff. Uh, and you can see why. Look how cool that gun looks. Looks freaking wicked. And it's a different color than the 45 ACP slide by Taurus, as you've seen. This is in kind of that Cav Arms OG green. This one is in Tango Down Flat Desert Earth. Remember, just because it says Flat Desert Earth doesn't mean it's flat. The word tactical at the very front of the name means it's ultra flat and has no sheen. This is actually a satin finished tactical coyote brown and we love it. It's very good looking. I did not like the black finish on the Taurus slide myself. It was kind of glossy, kind of cheap looking. That's just me though. And so when we rolled it in uh, to some Duracon, I was like, dude, let's coat that slide. When we did this, and here's an FYI, I had my son drift off the sights with a sight removal tool, not a punch. And you can see, even with a sight removal tool, they got marred up a little bit. Okay, and that was him, at least he told me, being very careful, and he still did it. So uh, that's why those are marred up a bit, and we're just going to have to live with that, because we can't really do much with it. We actually Duracoated the side of that. You can see that's kind of in that Cav Arms OD green. 
uh, no big deal. But it is uh, cast aluminum, and it has to be because the impulse power of a little 22 long rifle ain't much. Okay, so it's not going to be heavy. It's got to be lightweight, so it can recoil since it's a blowback operated slide. Size, weight, excellent. Firepower, and again, when we talk about firepower, we're just talking about how many rounds we can send down range out of a magazine or a single loadout. Ten rounds. That's the standard for pretty much all 22s, including that Ruger 2245 that you just saw, right? Also 10 rounds. Once upon a time, Smith & Wesson, with their Smith & Wesson 422, the predecessor to this gun, the 22 Alpha, I think the 422, by the way, was a better gun than this. It was lightweight. They had a very lightweight one, like a 22 ounce one. I'll show you that. Actually, I have one. I'll have to do a review on it. I hate reviewing stuff that's not available because it just creates demand for you guys and you can't find it anywhere. It's not fun. But my Ruger or my Smith 22s, uh, the previous ones, 422, 12 rounds in the magazine. And then for whatever reason, Smith decided, hey, you know, after the magazine ban, 94 whatever that stupid thing was. Let's go back to 10 rounds, unfortunately. You know, I think they'd be smart to come out with 12 rounds. It's just less reloading. And we're talking about recreational and training stuff. We're not talking about engaging bad guys, generally speaking, with your 22. Okay, but still, I'd rather have less or more than less. Um, the magazines, while we're here, are well-built. They're polymer, and they're more inexpensive, I will say, than the freaking SIG P226 LR mags. Those things are 50 bucks. Insanity. Box Everything misses. of SIGs is expensive. Everything of H and K's is expensive. This one here, around 30 bucks. Still overpriced, if you ask me, for a polymer plastic bag. But that's what we live in. And it's 20 bucks cheaper than the P226 LR Max. They're easy to load. I had no problems putting the rounds in as we cycled them through. We got a one or two extra ones floating around as well. So you can do your tactical loadouts. We use this primarily as a training tool, our Kimber 22 conversion on the Taurus slide. Uh, to practice 1911 battery of operations, for the most part, the only uh, fake thing is, again, it does not lock open last round. Okay, so you're just going to, you know, fire, again, safety check, safe direction. You're going to fire on an empty chamber and that's going to be your clue bird that you just ran out of information there you go to the reload kind of sucks i know but that's just where we are again um but firepower 10 rounds easy enough i like the magazines by the way i think i heard a report of someone say well you can't really it's hard to jack around in the magazine when the magazines are full i have not seen that to be the case at all okay moving on accuracy of the uh, camber 22 conversion uh, uh is excellent most of our rounds, and you know, we fire so many different guns here, it's hard for me to keep records on exactly the round counts we're sending down range. I'm going to estimate we have about 500 plus through the Kember. Um, and I'm going to get to reliability. Actually, I'm going to roll in reliable, reliability here. Let me move that up here. Uh, it was not reliable to begin with. Uh, we had several failures to go into battery with the camber conversion. That is, the slide would ride forward and not quite close on a loaded round. So you kind of have to push it a little bit. And that was before dura coating, if I'm not mistaken. Some of that we got on film, some we did not. Um, but as the gun ran and as we shot it a lot more and we went indoors and really cycled a lot of rounds through it to get this sucker worn in, it became very reliable. If you use high impulse ammunition, like CCI Mini Max, expect very good reliability. Here's a word of warning from me, nothing fancy. If you're shooting rim fire ammunition, like the Mini Mags, whatever, Remington, Winchester, whatever your load of choice is, you're shooting rim fire. Okay, when you shoot rim fire, you kind of got to expect a jam once in a while. Okay, you're not shooting center fire. Okay, and that's, you know, if you're going to war, and if you can take the weight, your loadout can take it. And of course, we'd go center fire. But some guys I hear complaining, well, you know, is it 100% reliable? And my answer is, no, it's not. Not even this gun. You know, I've had jams in Ruger 2245s in my Chief AJ-1 and Mark 3s and Buck Marts. I've seen it all. They all jam because it's a freaking 22. Okay, so you need to kind of take that into consideration before you start criticizing it. If you have a, you know, have a problem with it, then man up. Okay. But I will say the Kimber is extremely reliable once it is broken in. Here's another word of caution. Um, when we Duracoated this slide, and I made mention of this on my Taurus review, 
do not duracoat the inside of your slide, especially with these little aluminum slides. As you can see, we had to carefully remove any duracoat on the bottom. Actually, I kind of did it from an area I didn't have to, but we had some sticking of the slide after we duracoated it. So what would happen is the slide would not ride all the way forward. It kind of just, we need a little tap to go in forward. And that told me that I had dimensionally changed the internal rails of the slide by DCing it. Not cool. So very carefully, I had to remove that DC from the inside. And I say very carefully because that's aluminum. Okay, I cannot just go, you know, balls of the wall scraping that stuff or I'm going to ruin the metal. It's soft aluminum, not hardened steel. And I took that in consideration and I was successful in removing the DC from the areas that were causing the problems. And now, of course, as you can see, it goes into battery, no problems. Keep those rails lubricated too. Uh, whatever your lubrication of choice. And I don't really get bent out of shape about lubrication. You know, just regular CLP works for me. A little drop here and there because I'm always cleaning my guns. You want to use a synthetic, go for it. Um, accuracy though, uh, a reliability to finish. Excellent with high impulse ammunition. And even if you want to try something, it, again, as a 22, it will not, you know, break your bank trying different loads. If you have some Wildcat from Winchester, just the lead ones or cheapos, try them. See if they work. You know, if they work, if they work, great. You only have, you know, a few bucks invested in that ammunition. Another benefit of 22. Try it and see if it works. Most do. We even tried low impulse. Um, low impulse 22 ammo from what was it winchester promotional and it usually worked for doodle not me when i started shooting it i had a lot of jams with it, it seemed like and i always went back to cci mini max doodle swore by it. he's like hey it's running great for me so i don't know whatever accuracy very accurate on par believably unbelievably with this gun i think the 2245 is very accurate it is a reference for me out of the box 22 as is a buckmark they're both excellent guns i think um, uh, you know and i didn't do any you know hardcore accuracy testing down to the quarter inch because i don't have time for that and it's nonsense what i want to get deliver to you guys is practical actor i uh, can't speak practical accuracy stuff that you can use and here it is there's a kimber this is at 11 yards or 33 feet this is shot by my son, by the way, Tactical Doodle, and I thought he did a good job with it, and that's why I'm rolling it in front of the camera, because I think it's representative of what the gun can do. I think this is handheld, not from the bench. Had he benched it, it would have been even better. And I think, for my eyes, those little black circles are a little bit harder to see. I would have needed some bigger ones, but he did pretty good. Look at that group right there. Okay, excellent. Excellent accuracy out of the Kimber. I've heard that through various sources too about the conversion kit you'll be very pleased it'll shoot as accurately as you can i would venture to say if you bench rested it and you did it from the bench i don't know uh three inch groups 25 yards i'll go that far to say with good ammo but most of us are not going to be bench resting at this bench resting this gun we're going to be out there running and gunning with it are you know shooting cans shooting plates and by the way this is a fun plate gun i love shooting plates uh inadvertent smell and i did a lot of plate shooting with this gun you saw it in thunder alley uh you know with the shotguns the combat shotgun test we were using this as our go-to transition afterwards kind of got dark so it's hard to see all the footage on that great gun nice. ergonomics not much to say here because how you doing it's a 1911 Okay, so everything that plays with a 1911 ergonomically plays with a Kimber conversion. And the beauty is, again, you get to take benefit from all the conversion work you've done on your 1911 frame. In this case, and uh, you saw it in the video, we have a Wilson Combat value hammer, value safety. We stuck with a modified Taurus beaver tail grip safety, did a trigger job, already has extended magazine release, bevel magazine well so all that comes along with you along with your check ring that's a benefit to going with a conversion kit incidentally and this is a detour sorry but just humor me uh, like i said in my cmmg video remember that one where i'm talking about the ar-15 conversion i said you're going to see a lot of these companies come out with 22 conversions because ammo remains extremely expensive and hard to find and so sh that's what we're seeing now there's colts ar-15 they've come out with that one um later in this issue there's a smith and wesson mp 1522 another option these are rifles of course but it proves the concept that uh, concept that sub calibers 22 conversions are here to stay these are these are dedicated actually 22 rifles do you see a problem with that by the way 
look at that open portion uh, with the spring exposed. That just looks like an area where dirt could ingress and cause problems from a magazine. Unlike this excellent CMMG Black Dog magazines, which I absolutely love. They've been very good. I don't drop them in the dirt, though. You do have to take care of them. There's a Smith uh, Sig 552 dedicated 22 conversion. Of course, you have the American Tactical Imports, GSG-5, AK-47, dedicated 22 tactical, tactical platforms for training and recreation. The trend is continuing, of course. Timber, you'll see some more of it coming out. But ergonomics, uh, not much to say here. It's going to be what you have on your 1911 frame. Uh, one thing to say on the sights, I like them. They are low contrast, however. They're kind of like the Bomar 1911 sights, as you can see. Black. Uh, we might go fluorescent green, fluorescent red up front. I love this type of serrated back blade, though. I, I'm a fan of it. It's very precise. Gives you a clean sight picture. No criticisms there. Just a little bit lack of contrast. The feel will change when you put the 1911 or with the Kimber slide on top. It's going to be a lighter weight gun. Uh, you may or may, not have, may or may not have issues with the balance. I've never heard of anybody that has. Again, the aluminum plus aluminum frame is a very nice combination, in my opinion. I love it. Getting your slide on is a piece of cake. As you can see, Doodle does it very quickly. It's just a simple matter of removing your regular 45 ACP slide, sliding it off, and putting on the Kimber aluminum slide and back together again. Piece of cake. Field strip is the same way. Take down of the internals on the Kimber conversion, very easy. Um, my understanding is that's a stainless steel barrel. Uses a stainless steel match grade bushing. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse. <laughs> easy to clean, and I would keep it clean. Let me get a drink. If you don't keep it clean, you're kind of asking for trouble with a rim fire. And rim fires are dirty. And they dirty up your gun a lot. So I, I don't know, about every couple hundred rounds, take your slide off, totally clean it, re-lube your rails, and keep it, you know, ready to rock and roll. And that way you won't have reliability problems. So that will basically cover field strip and maintenance. Uh, you're just cleaning your barrel, you're keeping your slide rails cleaned and lubricated, and of course, bore brushing your barrel once in a while as well. As you can see, I haven't cleaned this one yet, because we're actually going a couple hundred rounds to see if it was still reliable without being cleaned, and the answer is, yes, it was. After 200 plus, it was still shucking rounds, no problems. Accessories and versatility, we kind of covered versatility in POU. Of all the different ways you could use your 22 conver uh, uh, can't talk. Kimber conversion, there you have it. It's up to you, the user, of how you're going to employ that. Accessories, very versatile because it's using a 1911 bottom half. You can change whatever you want with that, as previously mentioned. Maybe not the magazine, but a lot of other things you can. I would say value is pretty darn good. I don't like how they price these things. I think they're very expensive. Um, Sig does it, Kimber does it, 300, 330 at uh, Cabela's I noticed for the Kimber. The beauty of getting it at a place like Cabela's is if you do not like it, if you have any kind of problem with it whatsoever, you can take it back. Cabela's is very, very good that way. You've paid more for it. No kidding, I know that. But on the flip side, you have excellent customer service and they'll stand behind you 100%. And don't uh, neglect that if you have a problem. You might have a problem with this. I don't expect you will with your 22 uh, Kimber slide, but you might. Let me tell you something dumb that I did. I'm just going to lay this out. I mentioned this in my Taurus PT1911 review. This again is the Wilson Value Hammer. The Taurus Hammer is very tall. It, and I didn't notice this, it's embarrassing for me to admit this, but I didn't notice it, it would not fire initially. And the reason why is because that slot, that hammer from Taurus impinges on that tall back sight on the Kimber conversion. And so it never makes contact with the firing pin back there. Uh, I took it to the place where I had bought the con conversion kit with, we discussed it, he didn't notice it either. So I sent it to Kimber. And they told me it was up. They're like, yeah, dude, it's, uh, I think it's your Taurus hammer. It's really high. And they were very cool about it. They didn't laugh at me. They should have. <laughs> we laughed at ourselves. Anyways, Kimber had really good customer service. They were very forthcoming. They sent back a slide. They did some function testing with our slide just to make sure. So I was impressed with their, their speed of service and their helpfulness on the phone. Thank you, Kimber. Very nicely done. Uh, what we did then is we milled the Taurus hammer down as previously shown 
and it worked fine with that. And then we ended up sw swapping the hammer anyhow, so it was a moot point to begin with. So value, uh, getting back to talking points, value is kind of expensive, kind of expensive. Um, but the money you're going to save in this, well worth it, don't you think? I mean, you're talking 25 bucks for 50, more or less. And if you reload, your time's worth something, right? I don't know. If you do the math, you know, one, you know, 15% of the cost of 45 ACP is this. So it pays for itself, doesn't it? That's why they charge so much for it. It's not that they, it makes it cost them that much to make it. They're making some money off it. Uh, it's not bad making money because we do want to support these gun makers because they keep coming out with cool stuff. Kind of like that SIG 522, right? So we want them to be profitable. We don't want them to be going out of business. Durability, I would say, is excellent. Uh, I haven't heard of one wearing out. I've talked to some people who have thousands and thousands of rounds through their Kimber conversions on their 1911s. I haven't heard of a problem. That's not to say one cannot crop up because I think it's still kind of relatively new. Okay, when something's relatively new like this, you know, who knows? Track record, is it takes time to amass, don't you think? I do. But all indications point upwards that this is turning out to be a very good accessory, if you want, for your 1911. Reliability, we've already discussed. High impulse ammo works pretty darn good. Um, I think you guys will be very pleased after your break-in period with your 19, with your Kimber, with your Kimber 22 conversion, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to deal with the no slide lock back. Not a deal breaker for you, okay? But man, is it fun to shoot! And no, I'm not stuck up when it comes to caliber conversions. I love shooting 22s. It's fun. I like shooting 10 22s. I like shooting the CMMG conversions. I have just as almost as much fun. I will say. There's about a 10% coolness factor shooting full size. I give you that. I do enjoy that, but God, I just can't afford it, nor can you. Okay, so I give it a very high uh, rating with this review from Nothing Fancy. I think it's money well spent. It's a conversion that will pay for itself, both in fun and memories. Get out there. Get out there and shoot. Find a good place to shoot. Maybe it's just a range, that's still fun. If you can find an outdoors place in, the, in your woods or in the desert, take your family and friends out. And fathers, take your kids, your daughters, your sons, and spend some time with them and teach them how to shoot and teach them responsibility and dangerous things, mastering of dangerous things. Thanks so much, there you have it. Net and Fancy reviewing the Kimber 22 conversion kit. We'll see you later, bye. There you go. Now we're going to take a couple pictures. That was a federal garbage. Yep. Nice. I see a big old hole down there, dude. Six max, God, dude. That's how many? Five max? Six. 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 Six.